Be sure to subscribe for your chance to win a custom leather playmat when we hit 2,500 subscribers. Welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Mass. Here we have Jason leading out with a duress against Matthew on what appears to be Food Chain. We've got Birds of Paradise, Abrupt Decay, and the Eternal Scourge. I think that's the name of it. I don't know why I keep forgetting the name of that one. Still feels like a new printing to me. It's back from, like, Eldric Moon. And a Ponder for Matthew. So Jason here. Bayou Duress does signal Turbo Depths. Could also be Storm. And a Snow-Covered Swamp. Into a Thought Seize. Again, either of those decks a possibility. And we'll see what he goes with here. An Abrupt Decay. Hmm. Interesting. I would have expected the Baleful Strix to be taken if this was Turbo Depths, because it can chump block a Merit Lage for a turn, which can be a problem. Birds of Paradise can as well, but of course the Baleful Strix actually draws a card, which could be something as devastating as a Caracas. Uh, though, actually, I'm just coming off of recording a loam matchup, so Fuji not likely to have Caracas. That is not a stock card in that list by any stretch. Wow, another thought sees Jason with just all the discard. And Baleful Strix taken this time, and now a Dark Confidant. So this is like Slow Depths with Dark Confidant. We've got a whole bunch of card drawing, or discard. Now we'll see some card drawing, see if Jason can find his way to the win. Now, it's worth noting with any of the Depths decks, the total number of lands that they have in play. Crop Rotation can easily morph a board with four lands into the 2020 Merit Lage. But there are a couple of potential blockers. And Walking Ballista comes down, clearing Jason's board. Nurturing Peatland, some more card drawing. And we'll see if Matthew ever puts the shields down here. He sends another Birds of Paradise. And now the Eternal Scourge. And at this point, making sure that you have a untapped flyer for the rest of the game Definitely a bit of a priority. I mean, you can put the shields down. There are times where the risk is worth it, but it is definitely a gamble. Jason could just be sitting there with a pair of crop rotations. And if he has four lands in play, that can easily just turn into a Dark Depths and a Thespian stage for a 2020 during the end step. So Matthew will need to be careful. Or at least it would be wise for him to be careful. Might be more entertaining if he's not. But he can be swinging for four a turn. Jason's going to have his back up against the wall here. Depending on the player, there's also the fact that they can make a 20-20 at any point. So they could be playing a 20-20, blocking Eternal Scourge, you know, going to grab the the combo and then just start attacking back through the air but I mean it's going to be like four turns before that actually deals lethal because of 
the very fortunate amount for Matthew of flyers that he has. This is one of those situations where I'd probably hope for a really good connection so I can get a feel for my opponent's perception of, of their situation. You know, if somebody kind of seems like they're living with the possibility of winning, if they're trying to figure out when to crop rotate and try to make things work. Uh, we've got a Thoughtseize here. And Matthew's Hellbent. But yeah, knowing whether or not, or just getting a sense of whether or not they're trying to plot something or if they're just waiting for the executioner. Four damage to turn is very significant. Abrupt decay. Taking out the vault, uh, the eternal scourge. One damage to turn. Not particularly significant. And this Vampire Hex Mage does have that first strike. Oh, that's right. Eternal Scourge exiles when it gets targeted. That never comes up. And mostly because... Yikes. Yeah, that Eternal Scourge coming back. Whenever it becomes a target of a spell or ability and an opponent controls it, goes into exile. So Vampire Hex Mage could actually exile it at some point. That would be a very odd interaction, but it is a possibility. Which we might see before it actually deals lethal damage. And another Abrupt Decay. Just slowly trying to not die. And now a Mist Hollow Griffin. That is immune to Abrupt Decay. And this has turned into a really bizarre slog. I mean, if you were going to show people what Legacy is all about, this would probably not be the game that I would lead out with, but I would definitely use it to show people who think they know what Legacy is all about. A lot of times people think it's all turn one combos and unbeatable decks and just absolutely overpowered insanity but sometimes it actually turns into situations just like that where you're just casting a four casting cost miss hollow griffin and that ends up being a really strong play that your opponent can't handle and ends up scooping i mean that is that is just the reality of legacy is it's way way more complex than people would imagine i mean i don't think a deck like death and taxes would be at all obvious to people when they're thinking about what it would be like if you can play with all the cards ever printed. Uh, but that's just how incredibly diverse the format is. Turbo Depths, Food Chain, neither of these are, I would say, like hugely represented in the meta, but they're absolutely things that you should be aware of and prepared for. There's so many blue-green combo decks now that have like control elements. I, I really, I just think Legacy might be I and mean, we're like in a golden age. It's incredible. For It's too bad we're not at the tables, obviously. Uh, but I am so happy to keep these online games going because there's just an incredible amount of variety that can be reasonably sleeved up. I mean, for blue-green combo decks, you have, what, Food Chain, Alluren. There's a Greater Good combo deck, which looks super spicy, uh, where you're actually just assembling Greater Good with that new Ikoria card to just draw through your deck. I mean, that seems very interesting, very reminiscent of 
It's similar to standstill in some regards, except you're making eight eights instead of drawing three. Um, Omnitel, that that is an incredible. I mean, that might be the best of the blue green combo decks, but they all have significant trade offs. Like there are absolutely pluses and minuses in every every which way with all of these different decks. I mean. Food Chain has that backup aggro beatdown plan. It also can just win on the spot. Its combo can take place over multiple turns. So while a show and tell, if you top deck a show and tell and you have, you're up against like a Liliana of the Veil, you're just discarding it. Nothing's happening. With Food Chain, if you top deck a Food Chain, like you can just commit that to the board and then later on uh, you can actually be totally fine uh, or you could just have a card in exile already like you can just win from no cards in hand if you have the proper setup with food chain uh, which does make it somewhat difficult to contain i mean i've had matchups with food chain where i've completely stripped their hand they've got nothing i've got lethal on board and uh, if i'm not playing a deck with counter spells you know they just top deck the food chain and just straight up kill you. Or at least completely stabilize. I guess they won't actually kill you on the spot. They'll just get like 15 power on board, which against that type of deck is usually going to be game over if you're just playing some type of creature based deck. Once Upon a Time for Dark Depths. It's a really strong printing that I think is going to probably do really well in time. As long as they don't reprint that card, and I don't really see it happening. you got to imagine that thing's going to go way up in value. It's a totally fine impulse for one and a green. I mean, it's not quite impulse, but it does dig a little deeper. And in the decks that are looking for mostly just lands or mostly just creatures absolutely fine and then of course the fact that it can be free is just fantastic we've got a turn one elvish reclaimer and we'll see now if matthew has access to abrupt decays post board elvish reclaimer is a dangerous card because he will just pull the combo together I'm currently running him in cloud posts, and when he resolved on the first turn versus decks that don't have removal, it's pretty much just a matter of time. I mean, they have to somehow win the game because this guy will do the job. Jason's just going to need just very little help. He already has the Thespian stage. So this could actually be, this could be a 2020 on the next turn. During the end step, this bayou could easily turn into a Dark Depths or an Urborg, whichever one Jason doesn't have in his hand. And then on turn three, we could see all three lands tapping for black. Well, two of the lands tapping for black, the Thespian stage tapping to become a Dark Depths. Birds of Paradise. A solid start for Matthew, but Jason threatens to be too fast this game. And this underground sea, Matthew thinking and now pondering. No pun intended. Two back. Or did he just play that like a brainstorm? All right, well, ponder is resolved. I'll have to watch that one again. And. Oh, interesting. So Jason actually not using that Elvish Reclaimer during the end step. And he may be a turn off here. He might have just drawn the Dark Depths for turn. But I think upgrading that Bayou to a Urborg would have given him an extra boost of speed. We'll see if Matthew can take advantage of this. 
food chain, super dangerous situation here. This could easily turn this bird's paradise into a baleful strix and then off to the races, but no. Jason gets a card draw. Oh, and now I think, yeah, I, I gotta, I gotta feel like there's no way that you don't turn that into an herb org during the end step. One of the cool thing about these Wednesday and Friday tournaments is the lower stakes does allow people to try out new decks. So occasionally we'll have totally uh, like we'll actually get to witness kind of the learning process of the decks. Finding those plays that are subtle, that aren't necessarily, you know, these obvious plays that can kind of lead to, okay, here we go, food chain, missed hollow griffin, we're going to have infinite mana. So Miss hollow griffin is going to be able to sacrifice over and over and over again, or exile over and over and over again to create thousands and thousands of any color mana and then walking ballista comes down just absolutely gigantic and that will do it oh that is so interesting i will have to rewatch this and see if jason could have possibly uh, got the the 2020 in play earlier and if it even would have mattered as food chain just closed the door immediately with that miss hollow griffin into a walking ballista just like you draw it up that is all for this one but don't worry there is a lot more uh, you can check out our older videos and we're always putting out new videos from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham Massachusetts if you want to help the channel of course you can like subscribe share tap that notification bell so you can know uh, the next time our new videos come out thanks for watching